So what is going on everyone? Uh, this is my second time recording this because the last time my mic wasn't actually plugged into my computer all the way and it just completely blasted the audio. So uh, I'm redoing this. Um, I didn't have a custom track before this, but I think it's going to be easier to actually learn it off of a track that's existing in the game. So if I was uh, you, I would either go ahead and play around with it yourself or uh, go ahead and go into some of the regular tracks and either remove or add on and, uh, you know, go ahead and get some practice with some of the stuff, but today we're just going to be demoing what everything does, so everyone's on the same track here, and then eventually in my future videos I will be talking about how to go about, you know, making turns and doing different stuff like this to kind of get a better, uh, you know, thing for yourself, like if you want to be banking on tracks, if you want to, you know, have twists, turns, loops, things like that. Um, we'll kind of talk about that stuff later, but for this first video I want to go ahead and talk about kind of the introductory and all of the pieces and what everything kind of does. I'm making this simply because I want to help people get better at making tracks um, and you know be able to learn stuff because I know it can be time consuming and not everybody has all the free time in their days to be doing all this stuff so I'm here to kind of help and uh, guide you through all this um, but definitely, if you want to learn from some of this, take a look at some of the official course uh, editor's levels, or you can take a look at some of my levels that I've made and go ahead and look at what different things are, kind of how they're placed around, and hopefully that could help you kind of make your tracks the way they need to be. So starting off with this is I want to go ahead and talk about what this point is and why it's super important, is this point right behind the starting line, if you click on it, and go ahead and place anywhere else, it's going to move the starting line uh, wherever you placed it. So what you want to do is the point before that is where you want to start, you know, adding stuff on to. So once you've kind of made your basic general shape of track, which is what I would recommend doing when going about making a track, create a base track layout uh, first. Like, you, can, you don't have to be, like, precise with it. Just, you know, for example, put a point, you know, starting your point here, here, uh, you know, maybe up here, put one here, put one there, you know, if you want to make a turn here, oh, maybe you want to go here, you know, just put rough points and going around the track, and then, of course, loop it all the way back to at least behind the starting line, uh, bef or behind this point before the starting line, because that way you at least have that base covered, um, that way you don't want to mess with it, because, again, if you put it, if you use this point point, try to build off of it, it will move the starting line, so just a heads up. Now, of course, going into this, you have a lot of different options. Uh, you've got your point category, which is, you know, what makes your track. You've got your placing points, positioning of points, increasing the heights, the widths, the banking, which is tilting your track in different ways. For example, you can tilt it left or right, however you want to go about doing it, different ways to do it. Uh, the width, I would recommend, uh, this is the official uh, tracks uh, course editor's way of, you know, making the track uh, a specific width. Uh, anywhere between, so what I like to do is between 10 or 15. Uh, yeah, up to you, however you want to do it. You could even go lower. Uh, certain parts of your track can be skinnier. It's all depending on how you want to go about it. But uh, the wider the track, the better it is for you know room and allows for racers to kind of get around each other easily. But I like to play at least around 10, because if I have 10, I have enough space at least to get around, but also keeping it kind of somewhat tight. It's pretty fun to do that way. But then, of course, you got your centering, uh, so you kind of move the track back and forth, however you want to do it, and they go by fives. Then you have your wall heights, which will increase, you know, the wall height so you don't fly off the track so easily. Um, by default, they are 0.5. Then you have your air, so uh, this is your air stuff, so if you place, you know, your air... You want to place all your points down, and of course, wherever you want to have like an air point, uh, you want to go ahead and click from the place that you want to start. Then, of course, you've got your checkpoints. These are crucial for if you want to save your tracks. Make sure you've got plenty in the in your tracks, and try to make them uh, behind the main like attractor. So, for example, in this case, uh, I don't know if I've ever had an issue here, but let's say if you were to like fall and respawn when you hit this. You might get started up here, and you might just fall right onto the uh, ground here. But uh, what I would do is, before I have like a jump or something, I'd like to put it like at least a, you know, a point behind, so at least you have time to spawn, fall to the ground, then hit the jump or the checkpoint, or not the checkpoint, hit the jump or the fly pad, 
and uh, that way you can get yourself across at least. And uh, something I would recommend doing is, if you have a fly pad, don't worry about you know making sure that you don't have a boost pad here. But if you have just a jump pad, you want to put a boost pad somewhere in between your checkpoint and before you hit the pad, because that way your character uh, can get up to speed and be able to cross it over on the first lap since first lap pad doesn't have boost enabled usually. And you have your terrain stuff, you've got a lot of terrain stuff. You've got, you know, being able to put it in the middle, left, right, middles, and uh, fully across. Your feature width uh, is going to allow you to kind of increase it and uh, decrease the amount that's there. And your constant width, uh, let's see if you just put it to like narrow to wide. Uh, let's say I want to put it back to the way it was before. Constant width is going to make it go all the way across. And of course, narrow and wide is basically, uh, you know, as what it says. Wide middle is both of these combined. So if I want a wide middle, I can make the middle wide as that. Um, and then these other options down here, they don't work on terrain right now. Uh, other than, I want to say... Feature float does actually work on jump strips, so this is something to keep in mind that jump strips, they will be used for that. Moving on to objects such as power capsules, you can see how they are going up and kind of across like this. So kind of how this is done is normally they'll be placed on the ground at ground level, but if you want to increase it, you got to change its height, obviously. But if you want to get kind of this uh, curve, you've got ground to height, which would be this right here. This is ground to height. Uh, and then this is just constant width of it, you know, being at a specific height. But if you, let's say if you want it to go to the ground, you can do height to ground, and it will go down towards the ground. So it can kind of arc in a way if you want it to. Um, then there is the bell curve, which if you want to do it in the middle, you can do that and essentially have it, you know, from one point to another instead of having to put points in between. Uh, for these, you also have float values. Um, so float values are only used for jumps and fly pads. Uh, these are going to basically help you go ahead and control the jump heights and whatnot of your you know jumps or using the fly pad. So for jump pad, we'll get into that one in a minute here. But for capsules, uh, you can use feature intent to increase how many capsules you have and how many you don't have. That's about it for that one. Bold does not uh, get applied except for jump pads as well. So capsules are only going to be using the intent option out of these three, but these three options will be in all of these categories because some of them use them, some of them don't. Uh, heal rings are basically the same same way uh, as boost rings. You, they can be used in the same way. They are just a little bit longer, so I'll go ahead and kind of put heal rings here. This is kind of what heal rings are. You want to, you know, of course, change the height, uh, width of them. You can change the height of them to kind of match with that. So, you know, you can get heals while also getting a nice boost in between, um, but they will go from point to point, so just keep that in mind. Again, you can also do bell curve, uh, you know, ground to height, however you want to do it. Uh, you want to keep the constant width, you can also just do that, and that'll also work. Again, feature intent, which is like working with everything on this. Uh, this will can change how much uh, heal you'll actually get. So if you do like this, you will get healed up very fast if you do it like this. It's going to be not as much. Um, maybe I'm wrong on that, actually, but every time I've done it, it's always felt like that. Same thing with jet streams. Uh, you know, you can put them in the middle. Um, you can also use them on curves, so like this, so they will actually be curved. So if you want them to be curved, you're going to have to put points that are air, and then, you know, place them on the points and increase them the height, same way that you would with all these. Uh, they have the same applied things, applied rules that they would for uh, rings and boost pads, or heal rings and uh, boost rings. They have the same rules applied to those. Targets, they don't really work. Well, they, they work. <laughs> Let me just rephrase that. They do work, but they don't uh, work like you would think. They probably would where they like set something off, uh, like an event in the track or something. Currently, right now, they are just used to... Uh, you know, do little challenge tracks if you want, where you, like, break the targets or something. It's just a little extra side thing you can do. So if you do shoot at it with the uh, capsules, you will end up breaking them. So you can have, like, break the target courses. So that's kind of what you can do. Same stuff uh, can be applied, except intent value does not work, and these three just don't work. So going back to the jump pad thing, uh, where we were talking about the float value and the bowl value. So the float value is going to work like this. So by the way, if you want to place a one of these down, you don't want to place it down right here. You would actually want to place it down at the checkpoint 
uh, or the point behind it because if you do if you put it here it would actually go here um, and that's just how it's designed right now I don't know if that why that was designed that like that way but uh that's kind of how it is right now this could change so just keep that in mind um, so maybe in the future it will be where you can put it right where it's at and that's where it'll be but right now you need to put it behind and it'll go into that spot but going back to this um, for float value, what float value does is increase how high you're going to go or how low you're going to go. So the higher the number, the higher your machine will go. Obviously, if you click on the spot behind it, you'll see float down there. If you don't see float, like if you go here, that's how you know that's not going to work because you won't even see float and you won't even see the, you know, jump pad, you know, behaviors. So, you know, you can center it, you can, you know, move it along, however you want to do. But the float value, you can see that it's it'll increase when I click and uh, use a or D, or you can use the mouse, but it's recommended that you use A or D, or uh, W or S. However you want to do it, uh, W, A, S, or D, kind of increase the uh, values of stuff. But uh, you can increase it for, you know, jumping higher, or you can decrease it for jumping lower. So it just depends on how your track's designed. Um, and then you have bowl value. So the way I can tell you about how bowl value works is, let's say this is down here, and it creates my... Uh, track to kind of pull it down, which actually I'll go ahead and show you real quick. I'm going to increase this higher. You'll see that the track like gets pulled down like this, right? But let's say this is how I want my track to look. I want it to look so like when I take this jump that I'll make it across, um, you know, to wherever I'm going. And so the way it works with these is very interesting that if you don't make this bull value to uh, true, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to race, you're going to go off the ramp, and it's going to pull you down like this. And then it's going to pull you back up if you're going back up or something. So in order to avoid getting pulled down with this point of the track because it's going down, uh, you just want to switch that point value to bowl. And go ahead again, the part behind it, which we'll do here. And just set it to true with A or D or with the mouse, however you want to do it, but set it to true. This way it'll skip this next point of the air that are pulled down to the ground. It's it's a little hard to explain, but I have a track I can show um, with this demonstration. But um, it definitely allows you to kind of make cool portions of your track. So, you know, if you don't want your vehicle getting pulled down with it and then getting sent back up, and it kind of looks really janky and just kind of go across like this, you're going to want to change that. So that's kind of what that does. Um, up next, we have the hazards. Same rules apply with hazards. Um, they can be used with capsules where you can move them up, down, you know, however you want to do them. Make them a full width. Uh, these cannot have any timers to be changed. You cannot change the timers when they will respawn, but they will eventually respawn within like about a minute or two. I want to say about a couple minutes is usually when they respawn. Maybe it's a minute, but I think it's somewhere around there. Um, then, of course, you also got barricades where you can place these specifically where you want. You don't got to worry about them, you know, being a specific way. And, of course, you're just going to use these normal ones here. Um, except for these, you're actually going to want to just use these three and uh, these options here. So you, know, you can make full-on barricades, or if you do something like this, you want to go and click None. And just re-put it like a middle or something. And of course, you know, move around however you want to do it. Something I like to do is do something like this. I like to use it as an aesthetic piece. And I love to use billboards because billboards are great because they allow you to, you know, see turns like this. Um, if you're turning to the right, you want to go and put it left side because if you're turning to the right, you want to put them on the left. That way it shows that you're going to the right. You can put them on the right side, but it looks a little janky, as I would say. But something I like to do with these barricades is I like to put cautions as a little aesthetic. Put them to the left, doesn't really matter. Feature intent, make sure there's only one. And uh, go ahead and move it over. And now you've got yourself a little uh, obstacle that shows kind of, hey, this is this is danger over here. Don't, don't hit this, you know. That's pretty cool. You've got gates. Um, but there's different variations of gates, but uh, you can place them like this. I am... Um, you don't really want to go and place them like this, but you can. It's always an option. If you want to make it an obstacle, you can do that. Or if you want to just have one, you can uh, use the intent value. And with A and uh, D, you can decrease it to just one, uh, increase the width of it, and increase the height of it. Uh, of course, you want to increase the width so it's not on the track. And then you just adjust however you need to. 
That way you have a nice aesthetic uh, where you're going through. And uh, what I like to do sometimes is I will put like barricades up here and put my cautions up there to kind of like, hey, this is a danger zone or, you know, if it's needed. Otherwise, you can just use it as a regular aesthetic. Uh, but there are creative ways to build with it, which is very nice. And there's three different kinds. There is, you know, this kind and there is also the circular kind. So however you want to do it, those are different options. Uh, track types, you have different ways of creating like tunnels and half pipes. Um, these are the tunnels here. And uh, they're pretty cool. You can increase the height of them by using the wall heights. Um, you can also go ahead and do half pipes. You can also change the spleen type. Uh, I like to keep it on centriplegical because it works out much better for me. But you can also do uh, some of these other ones. But uh, personally, I think this one works the best for most track designs. And of course, you've got your laps, your environments, and all this other stuff. CPUs to test out your tracks, see if they will actually use. Otherwise, you can use uh, the single race and see if the, how the AI actually races on it if you can't get CPUs to actually work. Like, for some reason, they are a bit broken. Uh, this will be fixed very soon. So those kind of just do this while they get launched into the air. It's very funny. But you can test them in single race, and they'll work just fine. Um, cursor speed and whatnot is also an option. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be about it. Um, in the future, we will talk about how to do stuff like this um, for your tracks. But, again, if you want to see stuff, go on, like, some of my track examples or the developer's tracks examples and go ahead and take a look and see how these different things work. So, for example, you go to points, you see the width, you see the centering, uh, you see how they're centering it. You're centering it 20% negative to the left. Um, and that's kind of how you get this little pit area here, and you also want to see how much wide they are. Um, base track is 15 and width is 20. And then of course uh, you've you know you've got your terrain to put in there. So we'll go over like turns and terrain pieces later on. But the, for this first video I just wanted to talk about the basics of it and how to do different stuff in case you are wondering on how to go about it. But we will eventually get into tips on how to make proper turns uh, and even make sharp turns. But sharp turns are very hard to make. Um, but there are different ways to go about it. So uh, with that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you out, and uh, we will be continuing to make more videos. And if you have any questions about specific things you want to know, let me know, and I'll try to make a video on it if I've got an answer for you on it. But uh, that's going to be it, and uh, if you want to check out more videos from this playlist, um, it will be in the link in the description, or go into the playlist section of my channel, and there should be a playlist for Star Racer tips and tracks, uh, track editor advice. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it'll be something like that. And uh, there will be a whole vid bunch of videos of how to do different stuff. So for this first video, I just want to tackle on how to do the basics here and what they all do. So you can play around with stuff and build your tracks the way you want to do it. But uh, hopefully over time, my end goal is to help anybody who may not have the time to learn all this stuff or need help on how to do certain stuff to eventually be able to learn and make the tracks um, that they want to make, um, because level creators are awesome, and uh, I love level creators, so if I can help you out here, uh, I want to do that. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I do appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.